Hi, I'm Dr. James Doughton, Professor of Business at Middlesex Community College in Lowell, Massachusetts. Today, we will be viewing marketing students at the, our college group presentations. They have labored throughout this semester to come up with a new product idea for the doggy and caddy company. So we have um, went from product conception to product rollout. Thank you for joining us and I trust you will enjoy these excellent student presentations. Uh, good morning, my name is Ryan King and uh, these are my colleagues. I'm Somali Mo. I'm Kawet Rongan. I'm Ren Amigal. And our product is H2O's Leashes. It's by the Canine H2O Company and this is a company started out of uh, Palm Springs, California. We focus on hydrating dogs and products that help the environment and uh, they're all environmentally friendly. We started in 2014. And it's four of us. We all like we all enjoy walking dogs and hiking and just being active and so do our dogs and we feel that it's very important to keep them hydrated as well as keeping ourselves hydrated. So this is our product. Uh, our factories we started we started in California and mostly stayed around the West Coast, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and then we slowly uh, went uh, east towards Florida and up through New England. And uh, obviously, we expanded across the Atlantic to Morocco, the great country of Morocco. And so, the, so the product is a it's a leash with like a with a hose that can connect to like a fanny pack, a, a carry bag, uh, or a, for hikers, camelbacks. A camelback is something that you have a hose and you drink from when you're when you're hiking, so you don't have to take off your backpack or waste water bottles. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to conserve water bottles because. Water bottles can wrap around, the plastic you use can wrap around the world three times, which is pretty awesome. <coughs> and uh, the, the, the leash is actually made out of organic hemp, and uh, the hose, which is kind of like spirals around the leash, is made from medical grain vinyl, which is which is kind of like a hose, only it's, it's more natural and it's not like that rubbery stuff and it will disintegrate if left outside long enough. There's a steel clip on the, on the end, just like every other dog collar, it just connects to the the chain and the handle on the plat on the, the plastic on the handle is actually recycled as well. So um, the benefit is basically easy access on H two O for the dog. So yeah, you just tap on the handle and there go water for your dog. Yes. Um, it's very environmental friendly. It's ninety nine percent on organic material, and uh, I mean like like my partner said, you can throw it outside and it's the, the um, Bio the yeah, bio degree. Um, our target audience are all dog owners, especially um people that like to walk their dogs, like like to hike with their dogs. You know? um, we're gonna focus most of our advertisement online, um, especially on social media like Instagram. Especially if you hashtag H two O, you get a you can have a chance to win a free H two O leash. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and we have a, we also advertise our product a lot on Facebook. So if you like a product, you can also have a chance to win. All right, so this is me. So here's a brochure about our product, just for you guys to pass around. For our promotion strategy, we have people are able to enter a contest on Instagram by hashtagging H2Os with a picture of their dog, and the contest is monthly. And if you enter the contest, you have a chance to win a free H2O's leech and discounts on local pet stores and if you buy, we're also doing this thing, if you buy two H2O's leech, you get one half off. And this is our sales forecast. So for the months of January through March, since we are only starting up, we only expect to estimate of selling uh, 400 and making a revenue of 1,500. And then as the months get warmer, when more people actually walk their dogs outside, from April to June, we expected to have an increase 
of sales from two, from 400 to 2,200, and our revenue is going to boom up, and we expect to make roughly around $10,000. July to September, when the months are starting to cool down, but people are still actively outside with their pets, with their dogs, walking around. We expect to go from 7,500 and make a revenue of 24,000, but then. From October through December, we're only expect to sell roughly around a thousand because of the cold weather. So we only expect to make minimum profit, so six thousand five hundred dollars. And this is our pricing strategy. Um, for a small leash, you, it's only eight dollars in the United States. Medium is ten, and large fifteen. In Morocco, the small is three dollars. Medium is six dollars, and the large nine dollars which is all pretty affordable in Morocco. And to translate that into Moroccan to no, dinars, dirhams, it's Durham. dirhams. Three dollars is 16, six dollars is 32 dirhams, and nine dollars is 48 dirhams. <coughs> so product sizing, it can fit a large, medium, and small size dogs. Large for dogs weighing up to 200 pounds, the medium is for dogs under 90 pounds, and the smallest are for dogs. We're also sold on, we're, we're trying to advertise our product on Amazon, Walmart, Target, any other retail stores that usually carry pet products. We're going to try to go move on to actual pet stores, but for now, for our self profit, we're going to sell at retail stores. Straight. We are one of a kind because our product is never made before and we can establish a stronger market as a product progresses. Branding, our branding is um, K9 H2O company, which is our first product as a brand. We will make sure that the first product will set an example for our future product if we make more products in the future. Our labeling is a, is this, is a recycling label that's gonna be on all the leashes because our, uh, our leashes are biodegradable and they're made from recycled materials, so it's good to promote recycling. Why you should buy this? You could save money in the long run, you could go green, which is eco friendly, and you could treat your dog to something nice. Okay, so um, questions. And um, the first question is, I thought you were presenting to the Doggy and Caddy Company. So what company did you say you were in, from Arizona? I mean, you're, aren't you part of the Doggy and Caddy Company? Yeah, this is, this is our own little company that we're, we're kind of branching off. And, that and you work for the Doggy and Caddy yeah. Company? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're working for the Doggy and Caddy, but we're strictly we're we're focusing workers. on dogs. Yeah. And then we'll test it on to Cats don't really. Uh, okay. Uh, question is from um, the um, marketing executive board. What question? Yeah. That's Paul Flasher. Would you get that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Marshalls. Marshalls. Like that. Yeah. I've been marketing Marshalls now. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. Um, in terms, you said you have a pr your product. You have three different types of products, right? For small dogs, medium-sized dogs, and large dogs, yes. correct? The, the um, um, H2O's. Leash. Leash. Um, out of those three categories, um, did you, um, your sales forecast, you know, reflected an aggregate number. Are you think you're going to sell more to large dogs or small dogs or oh. medium size? Because wouldn't that have a uh, impact on how you what you're going to manufacture? How many? How many for the small? How many for the medium? How many for the large? Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's all made out of the same material, and because it's a leash and a hose, it's just like the length of it is different. So it's all like the same stuff. Just for every product, every size is just like a little bit more money involved in it because it's just a little bit more material. Right, but for for sales projection for the 
manufacturing people or distribution, they have to have so much an inventory of the, if you, if you feel that more large dogs need this product than small, yeah, well, or? It would probably be medium, because I mean, medium can hold, but it says to under 90 pounds. And I mean, there's not many people, the large is under 200 pounds, there's not many people like, that go for hikes with dogs that have 200 pounds, the medium would be the most popular. Oh, okay. So maybe as your marketing team thinks about, maybe you're not going to, maybe it's not profitable to have the large yeah. product. If, if the majority of your sales are gonna come from medium and small. Yeah, that makes sense. We well, would, that's something to think about. Yeah. Yeah. We would uh, market two large and small dogs just hoping we're gonna make the same amount of product as a medium dog, only because when people do buy for their larger dogs, we'll still be based off the large stock. Yeah. So we'll yeah. always have we'll always have those large leashes until they're sold. Yeah, but see, I think what you have to think about as marketers is that if you have an inventory of stock of, of, of large stuff and it's not turning over, you're losing money. Well, there are always going to be large dogs. Someone's going by it. Some pet owner with a dog is going yeah. to buy it. Yeah, we might cease production for a while. The, the thing with large is that it goes <coughs> up 200 times. You can buy a large one and have it be on a small dog. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but you can buy it. If you'd like a, a longer lease, perhaps, yeah. it works. Dogs grow, so. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> when, when you take accounting, and you look at inventory turnover, and see it's all kind of integrated that you're losing money if you don't turn this thing over in 30 days, 90 days, or whatever. It just builds up. So that from a marketing standpoint, you have to direct the company and say, okay, we're gonna make X amount of these more and less of these or none of these. And then, then the large dogs can be special orders, right. where you charge an additional fee for special orders. Yeah, yeah. we do have that in our, in our paper. Oh, okay. We well, we you guys. Thank you. How are you guys doing today? My name is Boston Magna. I'm from Shed No More. Hi, my name is Jean. Hi, my name is Jessica. And I'm from PVSN. Nice. Now, this is our um, product conception for Shed No More. The introduction, the purpose of this right now is that we at Team A Technologies, we're a subdivision of the dog and caddy company. We're here right now to propose a business plan to you guys uh, strictly aimed for the dog and cat uh, market. Next. This is Shed No More. Next. All right, a brief second song. The main problem with uh, dog and cats, I know a lot of you guys have dog and cats, is that uh, some of you just can't uh, shake as the t um, shedding from the dog or cat. You, know, you come home from school, you're gonna clean it, your parents come home from work, they definitely don't want to clean it. You have your friends over, you're sitting on a couch, and you know what I mean you get some cat and some dog hair all over your couch and you're feeling kind of embarrassed to have your friends come over and stuff. You know, so uh, next this is how we want to tackle this problem. <sighs> like I said, clean up after your um, dog or cats can be extremely tiresome and you know uh, when you have kids, you know what I mean six or seven years old, they don't want to clean up after your dog or cat, they don't want to take them for a walk, and uh, they just want to have the dog or cat to sit there and, you know what I mean, talk to it and everything else, but they don't want to actually clean up after it, so you really pawn off the responsibility on your parents. Next. All right, the competitive forces right now, a lot of you guys have seen it if you haven't used it already, it's called the lint roller. The lint roller usually averages between four and forty-five dollars. I know the forty-five dollars is a little extreme, but uh, due to recent research, uh, Scotch actually makes a limb roll for $45, whether you want to get it or not, it's your choice. The problem with a limb roller is that you can use it multiple times a day. What you're really trying to get off off your clothes is your cat or dog shedding. What we want to do is we want to completely take out the whole use for even needing a limb roller, and we want to use the product that um, gets absorbed into your dog or cat's foot, completely untraceable, undetectable by a pet. I don't know if you guys have had to give your dog or cat medicine before, orally. Uh, I don't know if you uh, buy a pill or <coughs> like the liquid, and I don't know if you ever try to hold it out. It's extremely bad, you can get a lot of scratches. 
this is why we want to take it the next step further and we want the yeah. chemical to absorb into the food so it's easy, you know what I mean, you can go into a different room, put it in there, they're not going to notice it or see anything. What it does is that it gets into your pet's endocrine system and what it does is it disperses throughout their whole body so that it temporarily ceases their shedding. So for two weeks we can guarantee, and there is a guarantee on the label, that our product does do two weeks where the cat or dog does not shed at all. Next, please. Economic forces. So our product will help uh, create jobs in Morocco and in the U.S. also. So that's good for the economy, especially in Morocco. The economy is not that good. There are not so many jobs. So it will help mostly in Morocco and in the U.S. Also, because we will be donating money to the most most of the money to like uh, donations and stuff, so we will have them also. Politicals, uh, we will have good relation if it's good, very good. It's good to have good relation with political politicians if you wanna grow your business. So uh, they they will market our products. We will get more benefits, and uh, they will be working for our company also, which. They will help, help, help us grow our business and stay in the market. Legal and regulatory forces. Um, during the product and pack packaging conception, Glenn Randall, that's our company's attorney, assisted us in the development of our product strategy. Thus resulted in the business plan that is in accordance with the current U.S. laws. Basically, he just makes sure we're not doing anything illegal. Shedemore has an employee program that if there are no work-related accidents. Kingby Lake Park will be reserved strictly for the employees of Shed No More to enjoy free rides, snacks, and drinks. Um, basically, there'll be like a cookout with like hot dogs, burgers, and stuff like that for a short period of time. We'll have the whole park open to just them, so there's no waiting in lines and stuff like that. Um, a safety committee will be um, convened. The safety committee will consist of our attorney, four managers, and six employees. The purpose is to address current or new safety hazards or potential safety hazards. Just make sure that nobody gets hurt. <laughs> um, technological forces. We plan to use the internet for our marketing and customer service needs. <coughs> uh, we plan on using Skype or FaceTime for our customer service so everybody has like, a face to face interaction. Um, it makes it so we get a better relationship with our customers. Um, we plan to use all social media websites to address advertise to our younger demographic to keep the updated to keep them updated on our company's latest deals and features. We're gonna use um, sites like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, just things like that. Social cultural forces. We when a customer purchases our product, they will feel good about themselves because most of our profits or proceeds will be donated to burn victims and skin recovery research. Next International forces. With our international forces, your um, actually, this is now we're moving on to the international forces. I'm sorry. Next, the competitive forces. Just like the United States, Morocco has the same issues that we do. This is they use the liberal. Morocco does not have a new tool that they use that we don't. It's really the same thing from the United States standpoint. Everybody. <laughs> So like I said, it's the same thing as America. Morocco does not have some new tool that only Morocco knows about to get rid of dog or cat ears from uh, your household or off your clothes. It's the same thing as the United States. Next, please. Uh, legal and regulatory forces for Morocco. During the product and packaging conception, Glenn Randall, our company attorney, assisted in the development of our product strategy, thus resulted in a business plan that is in accordance with the current Moroccan laws just so we don't do anything illegal for Morocco, because we're not <coughs> familiar with Morocco. Um, Shed No More has an employee program that if there are no work-related accidents, Adventureland will be re reserved strictly for employees of Shed No More to enjoy free rides, snacks, and drinks. Um, Adventureland is inside of the Moroccan Mall. Um, they basically have rides, a small aquarium. Um, they have a fountain show, too, with lights and music and everything. And then a safety committee will be convened. The safety committee will consist of our attorney, four managers, and six employees. The purpose is to address current or new safety hazards or potential safety hazards. Technological forces. Morocco is one of, in, among the top five 
in Africa with the most Twitter accounts, uh, about 700,000 or more. Um, we will be connected with over 16 million inter internet users in the country of Morocco. They'll be able to view our company's website. And as of December 2012, there are over 5 million Facebook users that will have access to our company's features and information. And our employees in our Morocco will have the technology to do their job efficiently. So for our international marketing, um, our <coughs> products, instead of being Instead of them being sent to burn victims or burn victim uh, research, what we want to do is that um, in Morocco, they're very religious people. You know what I mean? We want to open up to people's values. We want to open up to countries' needs, like their ethnicities. We have certain values in America. However, if we go over to Morocco, they might be different. So with some, you know what I mean, a little bit of research, our team has put together that they're very religious people. They don't really care about money as much as we do in this country. They still care about money, but they're very religious people. What we want to do is we want to donate to their local places of worship. I mean, we want to help them maybe build like their churches or their mosques bigger, or you know, what I mean, do more services, or maybe help them hold events and or and uh, things like that that help out the community. Next. This is uh, going to be a brief version of the SWOT analysis: the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I want to go over the strength. The strength of our product that I haven't talked about yet is that it's $21.95 for an individual bottle. The <coughs> price that we set has been reviewed by our attorney, Glenn, uh, Glenn Randall, and that it is a competitive price, competitive, and uh, we're not breaking any laws by setting this price, and it's fair. And $21.95 does sound better than $45 for a limp roller. Another thing that I want to go over is the system of the company. We have eight managers, we have 10 truck drivers, and we have about 50 customer service developments and customer service representatives and agencies. <coughs> All of our, our marketers go through the um, advertising. We have marketers strictly for social media websites. I mean, our managers, we have managers to walk, we have two managers to watch over our distribution, so our truck and um, our relationships with Petco and um, PetSmart and other companies like that. So we have one that works with the employees to make sure that they get our product safely and effectively sent to the place, and we have another manager to strictly work on the relations, um, customer negotiation prices, um, you know, any delivery dates, and things like of that nature. Another thing is that we're also global. Well, we want to be global. That's our business proposition. You said is that we want to be able to do this in Morocco. We want to be a company that has strengths. We have a product that takes out all hair away for two weeks. You don't need a limp roll. You don't need to spend forty-five dollars on a limp roll. You spend twenty-two bucks. And you have one ball that takes away all of your cat or dog's sheds for two weeks. Another thing is that you should feel good about buying this because when you buy stuff, you know what I mean, they don't really give out money to help the community. They don't give money to help out some of your values. We want to actually affect your um, consumer's buying decision. We want you guys to know that like, when you buy this, you're doing something good for yourself. You're getting a quality product. And also, you're helping, you know what I mean, people that have like burnt skin, you know what I mean, that wake up every day not feeling as good as they probably could. And you know, in Morocco we help out, you know, I mean place of worship. You know, people should feel good about buying this product because it helps them out in the household and it helps everybody else out around them. Next please. Weaknesses. Unfortunately with new companies, uh, you have to train employees. There's no way of getting around it. So the training would take a longer time and cost time and money to be able to train employees. However, with the profit that um, I research, which I will show you later, it's more than worth it to take the venture into this. Another thing, <coughs> excuse me, work-related accidents is another problem that with companies, I mean, if you fall, you break your leg, or things like that, it costs the company a lot of money, and short or not. So we want to make sure that um, our, our, all of our building designs are completely in accordance with all United States um, construction, and everything else is certified, and everything is completely safe. Next, please. The opportunities. The opportunities, I would like to talk a little bit about, uh, you guys know of begging strips. Begging? What we want to do is we want to co-venture with them in the future if uh, the dog and cat accept our company's proposal. What we would like to do is we would like to co-venture with them, and in our package, we want to have a small sample of begging strips, and in return to begging strips, we will market their product along with us, and we will give 
baggage strips a sample of our um, shed and want to be sold with all of them. So it will be an equal, um, it will be an equal tr uh, transaction. And it shows that um, you can, you know, I mean, you take care of your dog, but you're going to give him some treats just because he ate the, you know, he ate some chemicals. Next, please. Um, one more thing I want to finish up is that the United States, you know, I mean, a lot of people, some people in this room don't even have jobs. This company has amazing potential, amazing growth. Therefore, we'll be able to hire employees. Not be able to hire employees in our uh, proposed Dallas, Texas location. We'll be able to hire um, employees in Boston, Tucson, Arizona, and Texas. I say these names because these are all um, cities that have Dog Awareness Month and Pitbull Awareness Month. Um, all dog and cat friendly places where um, it's reasonable to start a new branch in one of these towns. Um, the threats, uh, you know what I mean? Sometimes there's other companies that have just as much money as you do. Um, Bill Gates, for example, come in and start up um, a product that looks just like ours, but it's a little bit different, <laughs> and it's not, and it doesn't uh, fall to our patent, so they can make a replicate thing of what we do. That's a chance that we have to take. <coughs> Hopefully, I, but that's why we have marketers, and that's why we, you know, I mean, we have faith and confidence in our marketers to start new products and new features that will be able to compete with any current delinquent roller or new company, whatever mimic they decide to go with. Next question. Marketing strategies. Next question. The target market, what we want to do is we want to go after homeowners, uh, typically between the ages of 20, 30 to about 60 years old. We want to do um, this range of homeowners with about an income of about thirty to sixty thousand dollars. I want to do homeowners between thirty and sixty because, like I said earlier, you can't trust your small kids to be able to take care of your dog and what cat and things like that. Therefore, we want to go towards the people that have that already have some responsibilities that are looking for more, that bring in a reliable paycheck, and that can be constant. You know, I mean, customers that we know will be able to consistently buy a product. Product strategy. Right. Well, the product strategy is that we wanted to give you guys a concept that took care of a very annoying problem, picking up dog and cat sheds. It's a very nuisance. So we want to be able to directly take care of that problem for you at a price that's good and acceptable, and you guys can feel better because part of the profits go to either um, a place of worship in Morocco or um, in the United States we have our own burn victim recovery. So doing that, so that should affect their consumer's buying decision. Right, next. Pricing strategy. So we're pricing, we figure out that our, our, there's going to be one package, <coughs> which, uh, which is only going to have a one bottle, then two packages, which we're going to charge. And in the U.S., we're going to charge for one bottle is twenty-one ninety-five, and for two bottles, thirty-eight ninety. So you'll be saving five dollars if you buy the two package. And in Morocco, there's one dollar. It's like eight dirhams. So we converted that to dirhams. In Morocco, for one pack will be one seventy five ninety five in Durham's, and uh, for two pack it's uh, three twenty three eleven point twenty Durham's for Morocco. Excuse me, you said it's one dollar. One dollar is equal to eight Durham's. Eight Durham's and thirty eight dollars in the U.S. Thirty eight ninety is equal to three. Three hundred dollars and three hundred eleven point twenty. Yeah, that's terms. <laughs> uh, the distribution strategy. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time because I know I've been up here talking for a while, but I did lightly touch upon this a little bit. We do have two managers that are strictly assigned to just make sure that they deal with the employee truck drivers, uh, CDL, um, heavy truck operators, and small truck operators that. Um, like I said, one of them talks to, the, um, to Petco, PetSmart, and any other type of store that decides to buy a product. The other one deals with the employees and make the assurance that our package makes it from our factory to um, this desired location. Next, please. The promotion strategy. With such a company like this, we expect a lot of expansion. We expect a lot of growth. It's going to be more responsibilities because we're going to have to hire more managers. We're going to have to hire more assembly, people are going to have to train more people, it's going to cost more money. What we want to do is that we want people to, we want to give people long-term job appointments. We want to give you job security. Not a lot of jobs over here have job security nowadays. That 
this company, what we do is you can come into work on time, you show passion, if you can be a little if you can be a leader, you can help out the people around you, you're the quality to, to be promoted to be a manager, and then moving out past that. Next please. Profit margins. In the United States right now, there's about 83.3 billion dogs in the United States, and there's about 95.6 million cats. What I, the thing is that when you do something like this, you can't assume that you're immediately going to sell to everybody on um, so um, all the cats. So we cut it in half, and we figured that one of our bottles times 41.5 million is about 910 billion. Actually, oops, sorry about that. 910 million, 925,000 dollars. This is important. If, I, if one customer buys our product one time for half of the amounts of cats, you have about 910, oh, sorry, 9 million and 925,000. And for dogs, 998, 725 million. Next slide, please. All that added up together in one month, this is our number, in one month, not a year, not anything else. And this, and like I said, we got these numbers from actual places, you mean statewide. Um, organizations and websites that tell us how many cats are in the United States, what um, people pay like their employees and their workers. All of these numbers have actually been verified and these are realistic numbers. Next slide, please. All right. So like I said, the competitors' weaknesses are obvious and evident, and they do nothing for their compute. <coughs> they do nothing for their community. Shed no more gets you more bang for your buck. Next slide, please. Don't pay no more, get shed no more. Appreciate your time. <laughs> the um, marketing board, do you have any questions from the doggy and caddy company? Do you want to ask them? Don't worry about it, raise the hand that wants them. Right. Um, <laughs> only comment, um, who was responsible for the PowerPoint? Um, it was a group design and it was a group chat yeah. uh, It was a collaborative effort. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, do you know that when you throughout the presentation you talked about shed no more, mm -hmm. but you had it in different, you had it in lowercase, and it wasn't. It was yeah. It was yeah. Uh, it was grammatical, it wasn't, grammatical mistakes. Yes. So that's why I asked who was responsible, because if you're talking about this is your product. This is your product name, this is your brand. It has to be the same throughout their presentation, your literature, and whatever. So shed is capital S hyphen capital N O hyphen capital M. And that has to be, that is your identity. That's your brand. And you have to always safeguard your brand. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Eric Warren. I'm Andrew Mercedes. And I'm Eric Lowe. And we are part of the Dog and Cat Company. We're a subset called Panther Corp. We want to introduce our product, the Panther Coat. Um, the Panther Coat is a basically a, sh a shedding coat that you put on your dog or cat. And we have numerous sizes. And the point of it is to help reduce shedding by a numerous amount and also make the coat, the fur coat, healthier and um, more soft and give a better uh, color to the animal. So our product, um, it's going to have um, a small, medium and large size. Um, it's a coat that you put on either your cat or dog and it's made with a stretchy material that so it'll be comfortable on your dog it won't get like irritated or annoyed that it's on them. and. It's gonna have um, different oils and medicine in it, so that that's gonna like replenish the skin and make it so that um, in the future it doesn't shed as much. And um, it's gonna have like a Velcro type of material on it to get rid of the loose fur that's already on it. Well, in the U.S., there's approximately 50,000 um, companies that will compete against us. One of the two major companies is Pet Meds and Pet Smart, which um have been, um, over the years, have been the top um, companies that sell um, products um, that help the same to uh, about shedding of the pets, like combs, 
about full pills and just like things like that. I mean, economic forces. Well, we're in a good economic forces in the U.S. We're right now in a in a recovery stage, and then when we launch our product, we will lead to a uh, we will go into the prosperity stage where we will be able to sell um, our product in a high volume. There are federal and state laws regulating pet shops and the sales of animals. One of the laws is the Pet Animals of Act, 1951. It requires um, pet stores to obtain licenses. Of to be able to um, sell anything about pets or even pets itself. Um, there's also the Nature Co Conservation Act where all animals from the animal kingdom shall be protected from abuse or torment. And in addition, there's the Animal Welfare Act of 1966, which states that how pets sold in stores should be maintained and treated. There are laws that are established to keep order and protect consumers and competition alike. So, these are things that will protect our product and anyone who tries to um, make one similar or copy our product. And we have the, um, the Federal Trade Commission, which gives the agency power to investigate, to be used to prevent unfair methods of competition. Number two, the Robinson Patman Act, which prohibits price discrimination that lessens competition among wholesalers or retailers. The Lanham Act provides protection and regulation of brand, our brand, our brand's name, its marks, and its um, trademarks. We have the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act that prohibits unfair or deception packaging or label of consumer products. We have trademarks law revision. This amends the Lanham Act to allow brand not yet introduced to be protected through registration with the Patent and Trademark Office. So even now that we have mentioned our product. No one can um, go and take our product. Um, let me say it. We have the Federal Trading Dilution. This grants trademark owners to the right to protect trademark and require relinquishment of names that matches our parallel six existing trademarks. Then we have technology. At the Corp, we use the, the new technology of communication efficiently to reach a great amount of people through media. For example, we have a website with which there will be a 24-hour online chat for anyone who questions and a telephone line as well. We will have the power to quick, quickly come in contact with people, create and keep track of appointments, and easily change activities that have diverted our plans. And we have our social culture. Um, we, here we will focus on the number of pet ownership across the United States that our partner can provide. The statistics on pet ownership has continued to rise, and with the Pantico, we will strive to drive an efficient revenue growth by giving the consumer an opportunity to groom their cat and dogs with ease. With the trend of pet indulgence, our product can become the hot topic for pet lovers whose job is to groom, walk, and even provide therapy to dogs and their cats. All right, so the competitive forces in Morocco would include Mayor Jane, Aswak, Aslam, and Asima. They're pretty much supermarkets similar to like Hannaford, Stop and Shop, and they have their own aisles dedicated to pet care, the way Hannaford and all of those supermarkets do. The labor force in Morocco consists of approximately 11.73 million with a purchasing <coughs> power of $180 billion. Moroccans use dir dirhams as their form of currency. It is estimated that 34.51 billion are used on the expenditures. The political forces of Morocco. Morocco has a constitutional monarchy with King Mohammed at the helm, and the head of government is Prime Minister Abdullah Ben Karim, with a cabinet consisting of the Council of Ministers appointed by the Prime Minister, as well as minister delegates to each ministry appointed by the Belt. The legal and regula uh, regulatory forces are pretty similar to international laws. The legal system in Morocco is a mix of civil law and is based off of the French and Islamic law. Judicial review of legislative acts are done by the Supreme Court, just like they are over here. The CIA factbook estimates that there are roughly 13 point 
213 million internet users in Morocco. That being said, we can reach the majority of these users through internet resources. We, we have our own website and we're gonna have accounts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and that's how we're gonna reach out to our customers. With a population of 32,987,206 and 99% of the population consisting of Muslims, with our remaining 1% including Christians, Jewish, and Baha'i. The languages spoken in Morocco are Arabic, which is the official language, Berber languages, I have no idea what that means, and French, which is the language of business. So um, for our strengths, um, our customer service is a strength for us because on our website, we're gonna have a 24 hour chat so that um, if our customers have any questions about our product, we can answer them quickly and they don't get stressed out like waiting and being on hold. And um, if they don't uh, go on the internet to chat with us, they can also call us. Um, Another strength would be our eco-friendly packaging. Um, we have scotch tape, which is made of recycled materials, and um, the boxes that we package our stuff in is also recycled. And um, our convenience is something that is a strength because although there are other products that are similar that can be replacements for ours, like the lint roller and stuff, um, ours is more convenient because the coat does the job for you. You don't have to like sit there and brush your dog or lint roll your dog or cat. Weaknesses, um, the market for dogs in Morocco is a weakness because um, they don't have the same feel for dogs or like connection with dogs as we do in America. Um, they actually feel that dogs are um, dirty because they feel that it like removes the cleanliness of their hands for prayers. But um, we hopefully plan to change um, our weaknesses and turn them into an opportunity so maybe our coat can um, can change their mind about how they feel about dogs and maybe they'll think they're cleaner because they won't be shedding. Uh, there are um, a numerous number of opportunities that we can have with this company and one of our biggest ones are our strengths which is the 24 hour phone call service and there's also an internet chat room which is also 24 hours and a big thing with us is our customer service. So at any point in the day, at all times, whether you're in Morocco, Morocco or the U.S., you can reach your phone line. And there's also people that are on the phone lines that can speak to different languages in Morocco to help compensate the language barrier besides the U.S., which is mostly English. And um, one of our other strengths is, uh, well, actually, we want to build off one of our weaknesses, which is the fact that Morocco doesn't feel the same way about the dogs that the U.S. does. And we do believe that with this coat that they, um, the shedding will be a big thing that they believe is very dirty and filthy about them, but hopefully with this um, new product, they can try to push them in the right direction to believe that dogs can actually be a good animal. And our, basically one of our biggest threats is that um, there's another company out there that can do the same thing, kind of like you heard today with the Shed No More. You know, that's, that's a big threat for us, but we believe that our company stands out there because we combine that what numerous other companies do, which they provide products that you can wash your dog for an hour or take them somewhere. What we do is we take all that into basically a non-hassle way of doing it. You just put the coat on, preferably at the nighttime when the dog's not moving the most, and um, it just does the work for you. Uh, our target um, market consists in the U.S. of men and women with a household income around 44000 a year, with ages between 40 and 54. The average dog owner in the U.S. is around 47 years old with an average income of 44,000. And we believe that the older um, adults in the country that own dogs will care more about their animals. And if a kid does, I mean, they just kind of want to play with them, they don't really care about the cleanliness of them. But that way, if the adults have, we want to target them because they're most likely going to be the ones taking care of them, dealing with the shedding, and just the overall care of the animals. Project strategy of our product is to completely get rid of the shedding. Because what the coat does is, in, when you wear the coat at night, it takes all the loose fur and basically removes it from the animal. So during the day of the following day, they don't have any shit. And at the same time, there's oils and medicine inside the coat that you put in separately that while it's sleeping or just while the coat's on, it's moisturizing and making the coat healthier, making it a better look for it, completely making the fur for the cat or the dog completely healthy in every way possible. 
our pricing is um, we have three different sizes. We have a small coat, which is mainly for cats and small dogs, a medium coat, which is for medium sized dogs, and a large coat, which is for big dogs. And um, our small one is going to cost around $18.99, which in Moroccan currency I believe is about $128. Our medium size is going to cost $23.99, which in Moroccan currency is, I think, $192. And our large coat is going to cost around $30.99, which I think is $210 in Moroccan currency. And the prices, that's if you buy it in stores. If you want to ship it, which we do, um, the only extra cost you're going to take is the shipping cost, depending where you're shipping from. We want to open up a shipping place in Morocco, that way they're not shipping overseas, because the fees are going to be enormous, and it's going to cost a lot more money. And um, when you buy the product, it comes with a coat, and one medicine bottle, which you can only have to redo after every three months. And um, after that, you can buy a separate one for $6, which is a very low price. <coughs> all you have to do is just pour it in the coat once and last in there for the few months that you have it for. Um, we, we want to make the Panda coat as easy as first as possible. We are in contracts right now to sell them in Walmart, Target, PetSmart, Petco, CVS, Walgreens, Wagner, Stop Shop. Uh, many places have already contacted us and <coughs> are interested in our product. We're also available through our website um, and uh, on Amazon, which you can buy it pretty much anywhere possible. So if you really want this product, there's no reason why you can't find it anywhere. And we are promoting in a lot of different ways. Online is our biggest thing because right now social media is a huge way to advertise for anything. Websites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, even websites like on the CBS um, website or Wegmans or any of those home pages, we're going to have a little side panel that says, you know, if you're looking for product to help with your shedding, it's going to be right there in your face. So if it's right there, you're going to click it and you're going to realize where it is and you're going to see our product and you're really going to want to buy it. We're also going to be in circulars and magazines for all the stores and retail stores that we're involved with. That when they send them to people's houses, it's also there. And um, we're going to do, we're in the um, contracts with a commercial, but we haven't figured one out yet. And in Morocco, since internet isn't as big as popular as in the U.S., we're going to have people going door to door and advertising our specific product to help get them in the idea of maybe actually having a dog as a pet. Because most of Morocco doesn't have dogs as pets. Most of them don't have cats either. A lot of the dogs are wild and just rabid and just, they're all over the place. So I mean, we want to start in the uh, suburbs of uh, Morocco. That way we can focus on most of the dog owners are in the suburbs and maybe branch out to the big cities to help them have a dog as a pet. Okay. This is our okay. website that we have created. So you created that website. It's up and running. We got tells basically what we just said now. A lot of information you can donate to us. You can buy anything you want. So um, you're somewhat in competition with Shed No More. All of you, both of your companies could co brand the H2O's leashes, I guess. Um, uh, in one of the presentations, they talked about how many internet sites are in Morocco, and then in another one, they said you don't have that many internet sites. So who's right? This is this 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 they, they have the websites, but they don't. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, is, this is why we're here. I mean, it is or it isn't. It's a debate. They have the websites, but the fact is they don't use it nearly as much as Americans use it used every single day. The internet uses is used way more in the US than it is in Morocco. So we want to just... How do you know how long somebody's on the internet for, though? Like, how long like somebody's actually on like, a social media website for? Because Service. Service. But we also is that what you just made up, or was that... Is no, we have our service. Oh, like people actually say, like, how long they're on the internet for in Morocco? Yeah, or, like, you can ask that question. Like, like, you circle, like, one to two hours, five hours, whatever. It was in one of our survey questions. Yeah, oh, oh, okay. All, all right. I'm just, I'm just, um, I, is the marketing board of Doggy and Caddy have any questions before the president has a question? You, you, you said a couple of things. Um, you, promotion, you're going to do a lot of promotion of this product, the uh, Panther. Um, how much is that going to cost us? Um, as of right now, we're still in the preliminary um, agreements. If we get picked up by the dog and cat company, we will spend as much as possible on the marketing because without it, we're not, no one's going to know about our product. And we don't have exact figures. But right I mean, now, but is it 
what you price the product at, is it adequate for us to make a profit, make a profit <coughs> yeah. and do all this promotion? Yeah. So how do we know that? We don't have an actual, actual number, but the surveys, and we believe oh. that. Okay, market, that's what you have to work on. Okay, any, um, and somebody was talking about, uh, they didn't know about Berber, the Berber language. Right. Right. The Moroccan people, remember, Morocco's in northern Africa, and they were, they migrated from a, another land to this northern African country, and they were speaking uh, Berber as a language. But it's, it's the, their version of Arabic, I mean, Arabic is spoken in Moroccan, you know, like how Spanish is spoken here, kind of lingo-ish type of thing, and French, as you said, is the um, language of business, where they do business. Well, I want to uh, commend um, all of you. Uh, thank you. Um, we're, we're coming to the close of our marketing experience. I guess you can sit down now. Um, and uh, I hope to have found that uh, the course has been challenging because the whole point of the course was culminated into this presentation um, in terms of applying what you knew and how to come up with a new product idea and bring it from product conception to product rollout. Um, of course, uh, hopefully some of you will continue in marketing and marketing majors um, when you go uh, move on to a four-year institution. And then you'll get either more in-depth in terms of sales forecasting and promotion and knowing the cost and knowing how much inventory that you can have in, in, in product mixes. So because the whole point of all of this is to um, make the company a profit, a profit.